everybody. This is our lesson on mold conversions. Um, so by the end of this lesson, you should be able to analyze the stoichiometric relationships inherent in a chemical reaction. What I would suggest to do, though, is to first review dimensional analysis way back from metric conversions before you start. So let's talk about moles. Moles in science, come on, there you go, is the biggest unit used to describe a measurement. So it's a very, very large number, um, but we can use it because we tend to use very large amounts because we're looking at particles. And when we're looking at compounds, we use what's called a molar mass, which is the mass of one mole of a compound or an element. And this comes from the periodic table. So the masses that you see on the periodic table, that carbon is 12.011, that is the molar mass of one carbon. Um, so if you were to have two in a compound, you would multiply that mass by two. The unit for molar mass is grams per mole. So let's talk very quickly about how to calculate this. So we've got two um, compounds here or elements. We've got N2 and CO2. Our first step is to find the molar mass of one, N2, of one nitrogen, which is 14.101. Since we have two of them, we multiply it by two, and we get 18.02. Okay. Come on. There we go. For carbon and oxygen, or CO2, we've got to find the mass of carbon, which is 12.01. There's only one of those. Plus the mass of two oxygens, which is 2 times 16. We add those together to get 44.01 grams per mole. If there is more than one element present, you multiply the mass by the subscript. If a compound contains more than one element, you add them together. And I want to make a little note here so you can have this for your notes. So go ahead and write this down. In a hydrate, remember that's one that has waters attached, add the masses of salt you will add up the waters and then add all together. So, um, in a hydrate, so like if we had 5H2O, you would do 5 times 18 for water plus the mass for copper, which is like 63. I'm rounding there. 32 and then 64 so you would add all of those masses up together so just pause really quick write that down because i'm going to clear the screen and keep going now i want you to pause the video and try these examples so now let's talk very quickly about mole conversions there are certain terms to know here so we have representative particles which are the smallest unit of a substance that exists naturally. So for instance, an ionic compound, the smallest is a formula unit. For a covalent compound, the smallest representative particle is a molecule. Yeah, you might hear my dog in the background. <laughs> um, so in one mole, we have 6.02 times 10 to the 23rd particles. This is known as Avogadro's number. Avogadro is, um, the scientists that came up with this number. One way to help you remember this is avocados make guacamole, avogadros is one mole. For covalent compounds, it is a molecule. Like I said, for ionic compounds, it's a formula unit. For just an element, it's an atom. Sorry, it's running kind of slow. And then we have volume, and for volume, it's defined as the amount of space an object takes up. When you're looking at moles, we are in Chem 1 here, assuming a gas is at STP. So when we look at volume, we're looking specifically at a gas, and it's at standard temperature and pressure, which is on your reference packet. But one mole of any gas at STP is 22.4 all the time. 
So this is a constant. Okay, so that does not change. <laughs> Excuse me. Yeah. And STP, like I said, is one atmosphere and zero degrees Celsius. So now over here to the side, I'm going to X out of my picture so that you can see this. But we're going to show you the chart to follow for, maybe, there we go, for the mole pathway. So if this is not on your notes, I suggest to write this on the back. So we can go from grams to moles to any other particle, liters to moles, representative particles to moles. If you're on the, um, the left side of this compound or this structure, as you can tell, we're going to moles, which means you are dividing by the unit you start with every time. If you're going from moles to something else, to grams or liters or, come on, I don't know why this does not want to work, it's so slow, um, to representative particles, oh good, I wrote it on here. If you're going away from moles, you multiply. So you can go from grams to moles, you can go from moles to liters, you can go from grams to moles to liters in a two-step problem. So you just have to remember how to set this up with what's called a T table, which we will see in a second. All right, so we're going to see how many moles it are in 45.9 grams of KCLO. I don't know why this is not, okay, it's not wanting to work. There it goes. I don't know why that wasn't working. So our pathway is to go from grams to moles. So we're given grams. We're looking for moles. And whatever we're given is what we start with on the top of our T-table. So you see that over here. We want to cancel those out. So we write it on the bottom. Okay, so cancel on bottom. So as you can tell, we can mark out the grams of KCLO, and we're left in moles, which is the unit that we want. You multiply across and then divide by what's on the bottom. So you would do 45.9 times 1, then divide that by 90.55 90 to give you 0 0.507 grams per mole. So I want you to go ahead and pause the video, and I want you to try this example. It is pretty difficult, so go ahead and try those. All right, so now you should be able to convert between moles and any other unit. Please make sure to write down any questions you